has outrightly rejected Trump's claims over Kashmir mediation. Trump claimed that he would love to mediate on Kashmir at Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's behest and has responded saying that no such request was ever made to the US president. This is the first time Trump has spoken openly on Kashmir. He claimed to have met PM Modi two weeks back where he had allegedly asked Trump to mediate on the Kashmir issue. Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan met U.S. President Donald Trump at the White House on Monday. During the meeting, Trump told Imran Khan that if Pakistan was helping U.S. advance the Afghanistan peace process, he also added that Pakistan did not respect the U.S. in the past, but they do now. The White House also released a statement saying that Pakistan had taken some steps against terrorist groups operating within the country. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has expressed his concern over the recent seizures of vessels in the Strait of Hormuz. Deputy spokesperson for the UN Secretary General has called for maximum restraint with tensions high between Iran and the West. Remember, Iran has seized a British flag oil tanker on July 19th. Iranian officials said that they seized the ship in response to Britain's role in seizing a super tanker carrying Iranian oil two weeks earlier. The influx of migrants into the United States has slowed down this after Mexico increased its presence of soldiers and police officers near its southern border with Guatemala. Mexico has done this and under U.S. pressure. It had promised to stem the flow of illegal migrants from Central America by July 22nd in order to avert punitive tariffs. Fourteen members of the European Union have agreed upon a solidarity mechanism to allow influx of migrants. The mechanism was proposed by France and Germany. French President Emmanuel Macron did not specify the details of the mechanism, but he said that the initiative would be quick and automatic. Macron also said that uh, France has asked the Libyan government to ensure migrants would not be no longer placed in custody in the country. Several hundred protesters gathered up opposite Downing Street to oppose Boris Johnson becoming the next probable UK Prime Minister. The Conservative Party is set to announce its new leader today, who will be succeeding Theresa May. The protest was organised by the left, in fact the left wing group, the People's Assembly and few speakers. Diane Abbott, who was also a part of the protest, said that Johnson's uh, thinking about race would set the country back decades. The race between Foreign Secretary Jeremy Hunt and Boris Johnson. Johnson has been the strong favourite. The UK government has condemned the incidents of violence that took place during Hong Kong's protest. UK has expressed shock over the unacceptable scenes of violence. A group of protesters targeted China's uh, office on Sunday night. When they tried to return home, they were attacked inside a subway station by some, a mob. The mob appeared to be targeting pro-democracy demonstrators. At least 45 people were injured and 15 remained hospitalized on Monday afternoon. In a move to render thousands of Palestinians homeless, Israeli forces have begun demolishing buildings on the outskirts of Jerusalem. Hundreds of Israeli soldiers and police moved in to Surbahar, a Palestinian village, over midnight. The Israeli army used bulldozers to cut through fences and break the barriers. This comes in the face of recent Palestinian protests, which is set to enter the second week. Ruling in the favour of the military, Israel's Supreme Court had set Monday as the deadline to raise the homes. Russian-led airstrikes have killed at least 43 people in Syria's Idlib region. The airstrikes targeted a popular marketplace 
and residential area, people drenched in blood were seen running to take cover while corpses were strewn around along with the rubble. According to Human Rights Watch, at least 45 people were injured in the airstrikes. The Idlib region, which is home to nearly 3 million people, has been continuously targeted by the Assad regime and its ally Russia over the last few months. Tens of thousands of Puerto Ricans jammed a highway to demand the resignation of Governor Ricardo Rossello. They waved flags, chanted slogans and banked pots and pans. Yesterday, the governor said that he was stepping down from his party's leadership. He also said he will not re-elect next year. Now, but he did not resign as governor. The protesters strengthened the protest after his announcement. The protest began after a leak of offensive, obscene laden chat messages between Rossello and his advisors. Thousands of people took to the streets of Manila to protest against uh, President Duterte's controversial drive against drugs. Protesters held banners which read Stop the Killings in Manila. This happened even as President Duterte continued to push his agenda for death penalty. Cases of crimes involving drug abuse. Duterte's brutal anti-drug campaign has claimed thousands of lives and has sparked widespread outrage in the South Asian nation. Even heavy rain could not deter the protesters. Military and police in the capital remained on high alert. A power cut hit more than half of 23 Venezuelan states. The government has blamed the blackout on an electromagnetic attack but has not provided any such evidence. It said authorities were in the process of re-establishing service. It was the first blackout to include the capital since March. Power returned for about 10 minutes to certain parts but it went out again. Electricity is still out throughout the capital. First Metropolitan Baptist Church of Savannah has been destroyed by a fire. The fire broke out in a two-story house and the flames spread to the church next door. By the time the firefighters could respond to flames, the roof of the church burned and collapsed. No injuries will have been reported as the house and the church were vacant at the time of the fire. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. A huge fire broke out in the building in Mumbai's Bandra West area. The building houses the state-run telecom company MTNL. Dozens of people were trapped inside. Firefighters rescued at least 60 people from the building. Many people were trapped on the terrace of the building. 14 fire engines were deployed at the spot to douse the level 4 fire. The Mumbai Fire Brigade used a robot to douse fire in the city. The robots had jets with 360-degree movement and released around 3,800 litres of water in just a few minutes. A shopping centre in North London was evacuated after a fire broke out in the two-storey building. The London Fire Brigade said on social media that 25 engines were involved in tackling the blaze at the mall. So far, three, and there have been in fact no reports of injury. A shopping centre's owner said that, that the immediate priority is customers and staff safety. Full assessment will be done when the fire has been extinguished. The cause of the fire is unknown. Police have advised people to avoid the area around the mall. More than 1,000 firefighters battled a major wildfire in high temperatures in Portugal. About 90% of the fire in Castelo Branco district was brought under control during cooler overnight temperatures. But all fighting, in fact, the firefighters' assets remained in place as authorities expected that the winds and the heat to increase in the afternoon. The Portuguese Civil Protection Agency said that 321 vehicles and eight water dumping aircraft were deployed to tackle the blaze. 
Police officials say that they are investigating the cause of the fire as there are suspicions it may have started on purpose. An Ohio County country house witnessed a dramatic scene. A convicted former judge had to be dragged out of a sentencing hearing. Former judge Tracy Hunter was sentenced to six months in 2014 for illegally helping her brother keep his job. She had appealed against her sentencing, but the judge denied it and her supporters broke out in cries. Campion, a small dog of two years, became the first animal to attend the trial of his ex-owner as a victim of mistreatment. This was the first such trial in Latin America where a dog attended a trial as a victim of abuse. Campion was found in a terrible state with malnutrition, injuries and ticks. His presence at the trial is seen as a symbol for the fight for animal rights. The UN World Food Programme is launching a new phase of aid for the cyclone-hit areas of Mozambique. Over 1.6 million people in the country are reeling under acute food insecurity. WFP was originally providing emergency food distribution. They have now entered a new recovery phase, which is expected to last until March 2020. WFP has urged the international community to increase donations to fulfil the needs of those affected by Cyclone Idai and Kenneth, in which 650 people were killed in Mozambique alone. A Libyan warplane made an emergency landing in Tunisia. The warplane of military commander Khalifa Haftar's forces. The pilot was detained by Tunisian authorities. The foreign ministry said uh, negotiations with Tunisian authorities for the release of the pilot were underway. A defence ministry statement said that Tunisia's air force scrambled jets to intercept the L-39, but it landed first. Houthi officials attended a showcase of the group's weaponry. From ballistic missiles to unmanned drones, Yemen Houthi rebels appear to have blustered their uh, fighting capability. They continue to pose a serious threat of, on Saudi Arabia, among the world's top five arms buyers. Canada is airlifting salmon upstream after rock slides blocked the path of the migrating fish. A plan to airlift came after triggering concerns of a permanent loss of fish population. The government is working with local First Nations communities to manually move the salmon upstream. The fish will be monitored throughout their journey, including blood samples taken to assess them. U.S. President Donald Trump and First Lady Melania Trump paid their respects to former Supreme Court Justice John Paul Stevens. Trump and his wife paused silently in front of the casket for a few minutes. Stevens died last Tuesday at 99 from a stroke in Florida. His casket was carried into the Supreme Court for public viewing on Monday. Stevens was appointed in 1975 and retired from the post at the age of 90 in 2010. The International Horse Festival of Ivanova was field was held in the Moscow region. The three-day festival saw horse riders battling to seize their opponents, war flags using swords. 
The visitors were treated to a Game of Thrones, in fact, Game of Thrones style battle over the weekend. At uh, 2.43 p.m. on Monday afternoon, India took a giant leap in space adventures as GSLV Mark III, also called Bahubali, blasted off from the Satish Dhawan Space Research Center in Sri Harikota. GSLV Mark III rocket was successfully launched and injected a Chandrayaan-2 into lower Earth orbit. Chandrayaan-2 will aim to follow up the legacy of the Chandrayaan-1, which found evidence of water on the moon. A lander called Vikram will land near the moon's south pole in September. In cricket, the Sri Lankan Cricket Board are mulling over the prospect of playing a test match in Pakistan, the first nation to do so in over 10 years. The Pakistan Cricket Board has invited Sri Lanka to play the upcoming two-match test series in Pakistan instead of UAE, where Pakistan have played most of their home test matches since the terrorist attack on the Sri Lanka team in 2009. Since that attack, no international test match has taken place in Pakistan, with teams uh, refusing to travel because of the security threat. The Lankan Cricket Board has consented to send a team to assess the security arrangements and then make a final decision. 